Hey everyone, welcome to Daily Dose of Medicine. In this episode, we will talk about MacArdle disease. It is glycogen storage disease type 5 and it's inherited autosomal recessively. And it is due to deficiency of the skeletal muscle glycogen phosphorylase. And in MacArdle disease, glycogen in muscle cells cannot be broken down properly because you don't have glycogen phosphorylase and this results in a variety of symptoms affecting the musculoskeletal and urinary systems patients afflicted by mcardle's disease most commonly suffer from muscle fatigue before getting into the symptoms i would like to talk about prevalence mcardle's disease is rare and affects approximately one in one thousand people however it is one of the most common disorders affecting the muscle metabolism. And this disease presents more often in men than women. Symptoms typically present 10 seconds after beginning strenuous exercise because this is when skeletal muscle relies on the conversion of glycogen to glucose to produce ATP the main energy source of muscular contraction. We said that we cannot turn glycogen to glucose because we don't have glycogen phosphorylase. And the clinical findings would be painful muscle cramps due to glycogen buildup in the muscle. We cannot turn glycogen to glucose. Myoglobinuria and red urine due to skeletal muscle injury Arrhythmias due to electrolyte imbalances caused by skeletal muscle death and second wind phenomenon due to increased muscular blood flow during exercise. What is second wind phenomenon? While early exercise is crampy and painful in this disease, the patient responds well with continued exercise. After 8 to 10 minutes, the second wind will kick in and the patient should be able to continue exercising for 45 minutes without pain and with an appropriate heart rate response depending on the level of physical fitness. And the hallmark of MacArdle disease, and this is the way doctors can di- diagnose this disease, flat venous lactate curve with normal rise in ammonia levels during exercise. And the condition usually begins before age 15 and is generally not progressive, although weakness between episodes of exercise sometimes develops. Lastly, I have a quick question. Which glycogen storage disease presents in adolescence or early adulthood? And the answer is McArdle disease, and it's helpful for us to diagnose this disorder differentiated from the other glycogen storage disorder because they would present an early infancy. So that's the end of the video. If you find it helpful, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing with your friends. Take care.